Amen. Open your Bibles, please, very quickly to the book of Psalm. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5 is our scripture text this morning. And again, to all of our Eastway moms, our grandmothers, our church mothers who the Lord has put into place, and all of God's daughters here and to those viewing, we just once again celebrate each of you. We appreciate and honor your labor of love. My wife Dana will be closing us out this morning with a prayer of blessing over our mothers who are present and over every daughter of the Lord today. And we have a special gift that's available for all of the daughters of God today out in the church foyer. You can receive that following immediately following our time in the Word together. But we are also here this morning, as it is with every Sunday. Everybody say every Sunday. We're here as every Sunday to first and foremost honor God. Amen. And I want to speak to you this morning on the thought, Lord has given me all the motivation we need for praising God. All the motivation we need for praising God. Listen, I know that you were standing for a long time, but in honor of the Word of God, would you once again stand this morning? It is an honor for us to do this. Amen. David penned these words in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5, where he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth would with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Brothers and sisters, we get motivated about a whole lot of things. We get motivated about taking care of ourselves and taking care of our families, about doing our very best on the job, about doing our very best to hone the skills that the Lord has. There's a whole lot that we're motivated about. But can I tell you this morning, above all else, we need to be motivated to praise the Lord of glory. And right here, David gives us all the motivation we need to give God some praise. Let's bow for prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, move upon the hearts of your people today and impact us with the preaching of your word so that each of us receive what you have ordained for us to hear. Motivate us through this message to praise you for all that has been accomplished by Jesus on our behalf because we are eternally grateful to you O oh Lord and we all say in Jesus name Amen and Amen as you're being seated look at somebody and say don't let a rock cry out for you praise the Lord Hallelujah all the motivation we need for praising God what we see here, thank you musicians, what we see here in this precious psalm is that David, the psalmist, is literally communing with his own soul. He is stirring up his own heart and he is encouraging his mind to remember. And most of all, he is motivating himself to praise God. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 
And then he records and lists five things which he is praising God for. He says, it is the Lord who forgiveth. It is the Lord who healeth. It is the Lord who redeemeth, who crowneth, and who satisfieth. Now, I was raised by a daddy and a mother who are both teachers. My dad presently, as well as my mom, is still teaching at 80 plus years old. My dad is an English professor at a college and he raised me to know a little bit about the English language and about grammar. So when I look here to the King James Version and I see these five words that David says are motivating him to praise God again, forgiveth, healeth, redeemeth, crowneth, and satisfieth. I recognize very quickly that all of these words are verbs. All of these words are verbs denoting continuative action. They are reasons connected with constant blessings that God is giving. Can I tell you that yes, he forgiveth not only now, but he is continuing to forgive. He healeth not only now, but he continues to heal. He redeemeth not only now, but he is continuing to redeem. He crowneth not only in this moment, but in the moments to come. He satisfies the longing of our heart not only in the here and now but when we wake up tomorrow morning I'm here to tell you brothers and sisters that the Lord God of glory is still going to be satisfying our soul hallelujah these are great benefits from God that we must not forget in fact, I want to give you a little bit of advice, and it's simply three words. Don't forget it. Turn to somebody and say, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Sam, cut the effects off this mic, please. Don't forget it. Tell them again, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Just as God is continually blessing us, we can continually bless him. David said these words, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He also said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Brothers and sisters, I believe when we get to the place in our hearts where we focus on praising God and enjoying his presence. It will not matter if we sing hymns out of a hymn book or words off of the wall. When we make up our minds that it's all about him and it's not about us, that's when a revival of praise will take place in our midst. Hallelujah. I believe these words that David spoke are so true. Rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you righteous. Praise is comely or fitting for the upright. In other words, it is natural to praise the Lord from our soul because he is majestic and he is mighty and he is magnificent. Our heart should be continually praising him for his goodness. Just think for a moment about how good God has been to each of us this week. We have had, some of us have had a hard week, but here we are this morning being touched by the joy of the Lord. Thousands in our world have gone to the grave having died, but here we are this morning at church 
praising God. Just think for a moment about how good he has been to you. And I'll tell you what will happen when you think about it. A praise will rise up in your soul and you'll begin to spill. Oh, come on, why don't you do that right now? Take a praise break and just give him some glory. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. Again, David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Come on, somebody. There's benefits to serving God. There's benefits that he loads us. There's manifold blessings that he gives us day by day by day. Well, David lists five right here that I want us to see very quickly. The first motivation for praising God that David gives us is that God forgives all our iniquities. Can I tell you that this is a foundational blessing? This is, brothers and sisters, the very first need that God met in our soul. We don't need anything else before we need God's forgiveness. This is the starting place for us to bless the Lord. The starting benefit that he gives us that God has forgiven all of our iniquities. Now listen to me closely. The first time that forgiveness is mentioned in our Bibles, you have to look back to the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, to Leviticus chapters 4 and 5. And if you want to... Uh, if, you, if you're having a hard time uh, falling asleep at night, I encourage you to open your Bibles and read Leviticus. Our first and second Kings. But we find something housed there in the old covenant. You'll remember that the priest here would offer a sacrifice where the blood of an animal would be shed. The Bible says that the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. Now that's Old Covenant. That's Old Testament. That's the way that it once was. But can I tell you that I'm so thankful that one day Jesus went to the cross on my behalf and he carried the cross of shame down the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering, and he climbed up Golgotha's hill where they nailed him to that tree for you and for me. His blood was spilled and shed on our behalf so that we might be forgiven through his sacrifice. The first words that Jesus spoke there on the cross were these, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can I tell you that one day during the ministry of Jesus, he came in contact with a man who had palsy that was laying on a mat paralyzed there, but he was brought to Jesus. And when the Lord saw the faith of his friends, how many of you are thankful for your friends? When the Lord saw the faith of his friends, he then said these words, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins, <laughs> thy sins are forgiven thee. And then Jesus not only forgave him his sins, but then he raised him up and he healed him. Another time a woman of ill repute made her way into the house where Jesus was carrying an alabaster box filled with costly perfume, pure nard. You study it out for yourself, very costly perfume. But then she emptied it on Jesus and fell at him his feet and washed his feet with her tears and then dried them with her hair to whom he then said thy sins are forgiven 
Listen, can I tell you that she was pardoned from the Lord, not the kind of pardon or forgiveness exercised by man. So often people say, I forgive you and don't really mean it. No, God's forgiveness goes beyond that of man. Folks will say they forgive you and then bring it up against you, but aren't you thankful that God is the one that once he forgives, he then erases it and will not hold it against us as long as we live into eternity. Come on, somebody. If you're thankful for forgiveness of your sins, give him praise. I don't know about you, but I remember when the Lord lifted the load off of me and I got his forgiveness. I mean, he lifted the load of guilt and shame. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then all of a sudden, I felt light. I felt like a burden had been lifted off my shoulders, and I felt like I was, as it were, floating in the air like a cloud. Thanks be to God. God, one day he forgave me of all my sins. I deserve to go to hell. You deserve to go to hell. We all deserved hell, but one day Jesus forgave us of all of our sins and hid them behind his back. He blotted them out and cast them into his sea of forgetfulness and washed them away with his own blood. No wonder the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, because he forgiveth all thine iniquities. Praise the Lord. He's taken them all away, y'all. The guilt and the condemnation is gone. Come on, somebody. I said the guilt and the condemnation is gone. The condemnation is gone. Look at somebody say, Condemnation's gone. If you belong to the Lord, condemnation's gone. Guilt is gone. Condemnation has been paid for. That's why Paul said these words, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you are glad this morning that you have been forgiven, just raise your hands for a moment and give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah thank Jesus for his forgiveness thank you Jesus not only has he forgiven our iniquities but secondly if you're still with me say amen David goes on to say that God healeth all thy diseases Oh, that's not just something the preacher put up on the screen. That's straight out of the word. Who healeth all thy diseases. Can I tell you that physical healing is still available today? Mental healing is still accessible today. Emotional wounds can still be healed. Marriage is healed. Minds healed. Men and women from all walks of life can still be healed. Spiritual healing through the sanctifying power of God's word is still available because he is the one who healeth all thy diseases. The psalmist said these words, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And then he says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Right here this morning. Take a moment, just look around. Right here this morning, there are brothers and sisters who have received healing from the Lord. If you've ever received a healing touch from God, raise your hand. Come on, somebody. Look at that. These have been healed 
But I want to tell you, I have also been healed. When the doctors told my dad and mom, oh, he will never walk normally because of this birth defect that he had. My, my precious mom and my dad, they laid hands on me and they prayed that God would touch the crooked legs and make them straight. They prayed that God would touch my feet that were severely out of line and they called for them to align as God intended for them to be. They laid hands on me and they prayed and the same God that David said, healeth all thy diseases, touched me. When I was burning up with fever from Rocky Mountain spotted tick fever, my dad and the men of the Wren's Church of God, they laid their hands on me and prayed, and the Lord of glory reached down and touched me and delivered me. When I was pastoring in Anchorage, Alaska, under so much pressure that I felt like my heart was literally going to burst out of my chest. It was God who touched me and healed me. Can I tell you, God healed me as a child. God healed me as a teenager. God healed me as an adult. And what he has done before, he can and will do again. You can go home from this place this morning healed by the power of God because he is the Lord God who healeth all thy diseases. Come on, give him praise in the house. I said he heals. He heals. Thirdly, David said these words. Not only does he forgive, not, does, not only does he heal, and these should motivate us to praise him, but thirdly, God redeemeth thy life from destruction. You study that out and you're going to find out that the word redeemed there means guarded. And David is recalling the many times that God guarded his life. Can I tell you another Old Testament example of this was Jacob when he was laying his hands on his grandsons Ephraim and Manasseh. He said the angel which redeemed or which guarded me from all evil bless the lads. Job, after going through all that he went through, he said, For I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Getting back to David, David had a lot of battles in his life. Anybody else have a lot of battles in your life right now? David was sought after and he was pursued by King Saul who wanted to kill him. But God, Jehovah God, I said God took care of him and guarded his life. Oh, aren't you thankful this morning for the watch care of our Lord, for his protection. He guarded us this morning while we were traveling on our way to church. He protected us on our job. Day by day, he is with us. The Bible says that the angel, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The psalmist also said the Lord shall preserve you. You're going out and when you are coming back in and even forevermore. Eastway family, we can praise God this morning and be motivated to do just that because he has redeemed and guarded our life from destruction. Come on, give him praise for that. He's guarded you. He's guarded us. Dwayne, he's guarded us. Hallelujah. Fourthly, if you're still with me, say amen. You haven't checked out, you haven't looked at your watch, so I hope he finishes quick because I got reservations 
They'll wait on you. God's got another meal for us right now. Come on, somebody. Not only does he forgive, not only does he heal, not only does he redeem, but David said, fourthly, that God crowneth us with loving kindness and tender mercy. As a crown surrounds the head, the love and the tender mercy of the Lord they surround. Can I tell you that right now, you and I, we are surrounded by the loving kindness and the tender mercies of the Lord. All around you, it doesn't matter which way you turn or which way you look. What you're going to bump into is you're going to bump into the mercy of God and work on your behalf. David knows something about what he's saying here. He is the one that in Psalm 136, I won't take the time to read it all, but here's, let me read just a few verses of what he said there. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. Come on, say it. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom bade the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever to him that made great lights for his mercy endureth forever the sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever the moon and the stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever every one of these scriptures found in this psalm are closed out all 26 of them with the words for his mercy endureth our Father, our Heavenly Father has surrounded us with His love. He pities us as His children and He cares for us. There is nothing that escapes His attention. If, if He not only counts but numbers the, the, the hairs on your head, how much more does he know what you're going through right now and will apply his mercy where you need him to? Hallelujah. Finally, everybody say finally. Not only does he forgive, not only does he heal, not only does he redeem, not only does he crown, but fifthly and finally, God is the one that satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Can I tell you and remind us that God is the only one who can truly satisfy. God is the only one. Eastway family, the world can't satisfy the longing of your soul. Friends, on YouTube, nothing in this world is going to bring satisfaction to the longing of your soul. We are instructed by the word to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world and all that is in it cannot satisfy you. You want to know somebody from Scripture? All you got to do is look to the words of Solomon. All you got to do is ask Solomon. Solomon tried it all. Solomon tried it all. He tried wealth. He was wealthy beyond measure. 
He tried wisdom. He was the wisest man of his time. I'm going to say it. He tried women. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He tried it all. But in the end, he said this. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Solomon tried money. He tried popularity. He tried fame. He tried polygamous marriage 1,000 times. But time after time, he uses the word, say it with me, vanity. What is he saying to us? All that this world has to offer will never satisfy the longing of the human heart. When he closes things out, he sums it all up by saying, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. David said it. For he, God, satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I said in the beginning that a whole lot of things can motivate us. Things can happen within a day that motivates us to change. Change our position, our thought process, the patterns of life. A whole lot that we can be motivated by. But this morning we have heard from the Word of God together some motivation that tells us one of the most important responsibilities we have as the children of God is that we find ourselves at a place where we praise Him and declare Him great for what He has done in each of our lives. David said that He filleth your soul and He satisfies so that your youth is renewed like the what? Like the eagles. You know, as I look out these last ten and a half months now at our Eastway Church family, I've often said this, and you have agreed, that when we look at our church demographically right now, we see that we have a, a, a lot, by far, a lot of, of, of older ones like me. I'm, I'm getting ready to turn 58 in just a month or so. My dear wife just had her birthday turning 53. Baby doll, you look 54. I'm corrected by the one who knows. But can I tell you that we don't have to end life like a sour puss. Mad at everybody, including your dog that you want to kick on some day. Because life has been hard and you've soured to it all and at times it, it even is something that, that just makes you so angry. That's going to show up on your face. That's going to show up in your life. That's going to mark you with wrinkles that you don't want to have. But all along, we realize that it's God that satisfies the longing of our soul. And he fills us with all goodness so that in turn our youth is renewed. We might be old, but we don't have to look like it. I'm telling you, when the goodness of God touches your life and fills you up, you're going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory, and you're not going to have to have somebody cheerlead you into praising God because He is worthy. I'm not here to be your cheerleader. 
You ought to have a praise in your heart when you drive up on this parking lot. And when you walk through these doors, Kim shouldn't have to stir you up when all along you have already been praising and worshiping God and giving Him glory because He's been good to you. He's been good. He's been good. I said He's been good. He's been so good. Come on, stand all over the building. Hallelujah. Now listen. Based upon the word that you have heard, how are we to close out this service? I tell you, we're to close out declaring the greatness of God. So right there where you're standing as the musicians begin to play, not something slow, but pick it up, guys. Give us some praise music right now because I don't know about you, but I am determined that God knows beyond any doubt whatsoever that this son of his wants to praise him and declare him great. Anybody want to join me right now in praising? Come on, lift the praise right where you're at. Come on, praise him with your hands. Praise him with your lips. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness. I'm no longer bound by sin. The sin and guilt and shame has been lifted. Thank you for your healing, Jesus. Thank you for guarding us, God. Thank you for crowning us, O oh Lord, with your loving kindness and your mercy. Thank you for satisfying the longing of my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, being satisfied doesn't mean that you've got all you want. How do I know that? Because when you go to, and, and you order your meal, by the time you finish your entree, guess what you're going to do on this special occasion? You're not done yet. You're going to order some dessert. Come on, somebody. You haven't had enough yet. He may have satisfied us, but I'm still hungry and thirsty for more of the Lord. I'm not fully, I'm not altogether full yet, even though, yes, he has satisfied me right now, but I want more. Come on, somebody. I want more. Tell him right now. I want more, Jesus. I want more of you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, sing it. Since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory, oh, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, sing, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my, my burdens down, Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my, my burdens down, burdens down, burdens down, since I laid my, my burdens down, I feel much better, so much better, since I laid Give him praise with your hands right now. Listen, right before Dana, Dana comes and prays a dismissal prayer, a blessing over our moms. I've got to ask this question. Is it right with your soul today? Is there anyone here this morning that if today were today that you breathe your last breath, God forbid that now. But if today were your day, are you sure that you are sure that everything is under the blood of Jesus? 
and that you've called upon him unto salvation. If you're viewing, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Every head bowed, eye closed right now. Is there anybody in the house that would say, Preacher, I want to make sure today. I don't want to leave this place without fully knowing that my sins are under the blood and that I've called upon the name of the Lord for salvation. If you're in this place, would you right now, while nobody else is looking around, would you just slip your hand up? Is there anybody here this morning? Anybody here this morning? You who are watching right there where you're at, you can ask the Lord to pardon you, and He will. He's going to pardon you and forgive you of all of your sins. He will not bring them up. Family might try to bring them up. Friends that know you best might try to bring them up, but I promise you, God will never bring them up. He'll, he'll touch you today and cleanse you completely. Call upon His name. Call upon His name. Call upon His name. Father, thank You for Your Word today. Thank You for touching us. And Lord, I believe we're leaving here with a spring in our step. God, and a praise on our lips and victory in our souls. Because you have paid the price, Jesus. And you're the one that deserves all the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Again, to every mom, happy Mother's Day from me, but also from my beloved. She wants to say a few words before we dismiss. They dismiss you with a prayer blessing. There's so many words already said. We don't have to say anything else, do we? Just thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank God for this day, the day that he has made. And we can continue to go through the calendar and celebrate Mom's Day, Dad's Day on the way that the calendar says to celebrate. But every day is the Lord's Day. And every day we celebrate motherhood and mothering. Uh, as the Lord leads all women, even the little girls that carry the baby dolls around, they're mothering. And so I just thank God and praise God for the opportunity to just thank Him and praise Him every day. This is just a little reminder for all the girls in the room, no matter what your age is, we're hoping everybody can get one of these. And it simply says, the Lord delighteth in thee. And there's a mirror on there. And I want you just to take a moment and look at yourself in that mirror. And I just want you to remember how beautiful and how loved you are. You are created in the image of God. And God loves his sons and daughters. All his babies belong to him. And so we celebrate life today. We celebrate love. We celebrate all that God has poured in and through us. And just give, give, give. Give all that you are to him. And give all that you are to others around you. And allow life to happen in Jesus name and I just bless you today in the name of Jesus may your day be filled with the joy of the Lord who is your strength in his name amen well God bless you happy Mother's Day again have a great week in Jesus name